all right so today we are going to be doing the brainy tier list so the the whole idea of do, doing these tier lists is basically we're ranking each card inside of each class so we're doing this to basically rank how good each card is in general uh and we're going to be rating this you know sort of in a way that is kind of you know um how do you say it so we, we are sort of rating these cards based on the competitive meta so we're not basing this off how fun the cards are we're not basing off the how you know how funny the cards are we're not basing anything but the competitiveness of the cards so we're only taking into two factors right here the first factor is how you know strong it is a card is overall the power of a card overall and secondly the versatility of a card overall uh with the four different heroes that you can run the card with or five because we're running break because it's the brainy class we have the super brains and hg so we have taken into account for five heroes instead of the normal four um for the versatility of the card so if a card has very high power but very low versatility usually i would not rate that over a b tier and because if a card is only useful in one hero i usually would not rate it above b tier uh, that's like a, the standard if a card is a tier it has to be meta defining it has to be a card that is you know existing in a meta for several different heroes and is versatile enough to be considered a tier so with that out of the way uh let's just get right onto the first card first card <laughs> is this right here cardboard robot zombie guys this card is opc this guy makes all the elo scores you know we all know cardboard robot makes all the elo scores in the world so therefore a tier you name it okay <laughs> next card chimney sweep so chimney sweep is actually pretty decent because it's a one cost free two um so chimney sweep is a one cost free two which is actually overstat for a one cost card which is actually not that bad uh, however there's a huge liability with chimney sweep even though it's a one cost free two is that you're like drawing multiple chimney sweeps is horrible like if you if you are playing chimney sweep not on heights then chimney sweep is literally just a two one and it and a free two is not worth like not high enough value of tempo to be worth running chimney sweep in the deck because you're looking for like other turn one plays usually with the brainy class uh specifically uh interdimensional zombie and neutron imp and in some cases even just like leprechaun imp if you're playing super brain solo imps um and this card is fine for budget this card is competitively viable and like uh a very budget burn deck uh but it is viable because it is a one cost free two sometimes on turn one but the liability is that you double draw it so uh i have decided to rate it a d tier solid d tier card um kind of low on the d tier side of things but even though it's not in the db deck uh it's still worth a d tier so yeah uh, next card. So next card is actually interdimensional zombie. So this card actually used to be in F tier. So we actually used to put interdimensional zombie in F tier, but the a general opinion of this card has actually shifted that interdimensional zombie is C tier. So why is interdimensional zombie actually C tier now? Uh, and that is simply because of Tisha of some size, and that is a new you know database deck. Uh, that's actually the newest database deck as of right now, which is 9th of October for me. Uh, so it's in and it utilizes interdimensional zombie very well because it's a free cost card that you can use you know you can it's a one cost card and it becomes a free cost card and the free cost card is usually very good it's the amount of tempo and interdimensional zombie happens to work very well with tissue of some size because you're able to you know spend so many science minions on those turns like you're placing a lot of like strong science minions on the board like teleportation zombie uh neutron imp area 22 cyborg these are all science cards that activate this interdimensional zombie and previously interdimensional zombie would not have at interdimensional zombie would not have been rated this high because of the fact that people have been trying to use interdimensional zombie in the same deck as like gadget scientists so that's where the misconception comes in right here is that people try to use interdimensional zombie in with like drone engineer and gadget scientists because guys it's science synergy we must use it with drone engineer and gadget scientists because more science synergy is overall better and but that is actually not true the idea that you're trying to use drone engineer of interdimensional zombie is self-conflicting because interdimensional zombie does not transform to specifically a free cost science card it only transforms into a free cost card so it gives you more stats but it doesn't actually have the science trait in it so what is this deck perfect for now that is perfect for the tissue of some size because tissue of some size is looking for building up that you know general tempo of the deck without relying on the science synergy that hard because you're usually looking for that you know tempo 
uh, from the free cost card that interdimensional zombie transforms into, rather than the you know, you know the gimmicky science synergy of the interdimensional zombie. And let me explain why interdimensional zombie is actually better than cheese cutter and tish up sometimes though. Uh, so the reason why it's actually better than cheese cutter is because this is way better when you have a full board. When you are on a full board scenario, interdimensional zombie provides way more tempo than cheese cutter because you can immediately get tempo out of interdimensional zombie. Cheese cutter has to get tempo after it hits face. That is a that's a huge difference because then you can't just immediately activate this for like to get like I don't know like any like free cost car like even a raptor. So you can't just immediately like get a raptor out of out of a cheese cutter since you have to actually hit face first before. Uh, any tempo happens, otherwise it's just one cost two two. So this is why interdimensional zombie is overall better. Um, <laughs> and ironically, the two two overall better combo is running tissue of some size. It's very good. <laughs> um, so yeah. All right, the next card is Leprechaun Imp. So Leprechaun Imp sits at a solid D tier. Um, it's higher than Chimney Sweep. So the only usage for Leprechaun Imp is really just as a imp for super brains teleamps there's literally no purpose of running leprechaun imp in any other deck than super brains teleamps because you have no better options <laughs> to run leprechaun imp and neutron imp uh, technically does something if your opponent's plays environment like kind of irrelevant so you use leprechaun imp instead so the only <laughs> useful part is that it's a one cost two two imp and the fact that it shuffles one pot of gold into your deck literally almost never matters and you are almost never getting that one pot of gold because you're only shuffling a token copy of that pot of gold in your deck and what makes this redeeming as a card is literally just it's trait as an imp if this wasn't an imp this would be instantly after yours and this is literally its only usage is this hella imps like uh, i don't i don't know what to really say unfortunately <laughs> we don't have any better options than just leprechaun imp the card is not not good <laughs> I'm just waiting at these here just because it's using one database deck and <laughs> Leprechaun Amp is a lot worse than Neutron Amp when you compare them to uh, from Super Brain Cell Limps to HD Cell Limps. And we'll get more into Neutron Amp in a couple of cards, of, uh, but let's just get on to the next card. This card is not good. Would not recommend crafting this, guys. <laughs> Would definitely not recommend using Leprechaun Amp. It costs 2,000 spark as well. <laughs> Do not use Leprechaun if you have HG already. Okay, so this is the biggest winner of this tier list. We used to put Mustache Waxer in F tier, but Mustache Waxer is actually now B tier. So let me actually start explaining why Mustache Waxer is actually such a great card, and we just really found out the usage of Mustache Waxer um, in this couple of months. So the whole thing with Mustache Waxer, the whole misconception is that people try to make mustache decks, and they try to make aggro mustaches. So what happens is that you end up playing Mustache Waxer, and then you play like a couple of mustache cards like Grave Robbers and Quasars, and then you end up having this full board, and you have a lot of brains left over because you spent you spent all these brains on a full board. So you have like all this swarm on the board, but it's not actually going to ever break through because you're actually literally just spamming minions on the board without having to use tricks and to helping them to go face. And also, it doesn't take into account that Mustache Waxer loses value once you start having a full board because then you can't play more mustaches to profit off, you know, this kind of Waxer thing. But there's a whole new deck that is actually better than Froster and that is Trick Stash. And Trick Stash uses Mustache Waxer very, very well because now... Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you guys the deck right now, actually. Trick Stash, this is better than Froster, guys. This is better than Froster. Better than Valkyrie, better than Froster. So this is Trick Stash. So the whole idea of the deck is literally you spend your Mustache Waxer and you fill the board uh, with Mustache cards so that your opponent can't actually break through. And then, because you're spending these, like, zero-cost Grave Robbers, like, this is great as a zero-cost card, like, literally just spending... And, Besides from that part is that it's still a great card without having Waxer. And these are like, and Bungie Plumbers and Mustache and Grave Robbers are literally pseudo zero costers with Grave Ro uh, with Mustache Waxer. And Mustache Waxer grows by one health every single time they play a Mustache. And that is perfect for this kind of deck because you are literally profiting from having so many extra reigns from, you know, ramping with your Mustache Waxer. Then you can charge up your Tricksters in the background by doing removal tricks. Uh, final mission, free kick, teleports, fun dead razors, and all that kind of things to help you charge that trickster up because you're actually ramping up in cards and you're getting a very good tempo card. The thing about this, 
If you play two mustaches, this is a one cost two four. That is insanely broken. <laughs> like a one cost two four, and you get two brains back. Like how, who would not want this? <laughs> like this is amazing. And if, when you use it with Quasar, Quasar becomes a one cost card, and you conjure a superpower. Like when Quasar becomes a two cost card that you can play a superpower or any minion that's a two two. It becomes amazing because it, the waxer synergy, and that's why we're actually putting mustache waxer uh, in side of B tier because it's very good at trick stash. But the whole thing is that do not use duck stash with mustache waxer. Duck stash is a horrible card. Do not ever use duck stash. Duck stash is a free cost, free attack, two health minion, and if you evolve it on one of your mustaches, that's just losing your own card advantage. And you're conjuring a random mustache back. And that, you know, plus two, plus two buff usually does not help it do anything. Uh, so do not use a duck stash with mustache waxer. It's not a good combo. Use mustache waxer in trick stash and that's it. Uh, solid beats your card. Okay, next card. Now, this is a gem inside of the <laughs> brainy class. This is actually a very good card. I'm reading this in 8th here. So the whole thing about Neutron it is that it's very strong with HG because you have those built-in environments and once you start playing environments for one cost then you profit a lot of Neutron it because you literally do a bonus attack. You literally do 2 damage by just playing an environment. That's amazing with HG because and that's why like HG Teleimps is a whole tier higher <laughs> than Super Brain Teleimps. Like Super Brain Teleimps is ranked as high tier two, and HG Teleimps is ranked as high tier one, and probably the best deck in the game. <laughs> it makes a huge difference when you run Neutron in because you have those built-in environments of HG. So why is it even an A tier? Because because RCCH didn't you mention that you can't put a card above B tier if it's not useful? other than in one deck. So the thing is about Neutron M is that it's also very good with Area 22. So if Area 22, you are playing a 4 cost combo and you're doing 8 damage in that turn. This is similar to Barrel Final Mission without the Splash and th that that's a good amount of damage is that you're doing Neutron M with Area 22, 4 damage frenzy in this lane Almost nothing in the game stops that uh, from happening other than just a free night combo and they're still not profiting off that free night combo because you can still play the area 22 anywhere else on your board and that Neutron Nip is still going to do that bonus attack and if this and Neutron Nip also punishes your opponents playing bonus uh, playing environment which is pretty cool because uh, so essentially it takes off 10% of your opponent's health to play the environment which is actually very good <laughs> and happens to be a very good ability so solid A tier. Uh, next card. So next card, Paparazzi. So Paparazzi um, is a viable card in the meta. Um, and specifically, a one deck also called uh, Paparazzi. I'm pretty sure most of you guys would probably know what a Paparazzi is already. Uh, it's a <laughs> Rust. Bowl, it's the best Rust Bowl deck in the game. And we're using Pog Paparazzi to build up, you know, those insane stats with Teacher. And the reason why I synergize it so well is because that you're actually able to start playing those zero cost healthy trees and those two cost going virals on your Paparazzi once you have that Teacher on the board. And you're able to grow that Paparazzi so fast that your opponent is probably not going to be able to keep up with it. And Paparazzi uh, and Paparazzi as a deck in general does amazing into ranked mode because people don't apply enough pressure on ranked. People will literally play decks that have almost no pressure in them. And that makes Pogorazzi so good because Pogorazzi wins almost every single time against a deck with low pressure because it's able to, you know, uh, draw into that combo with Funded Razors, Teleports, you know, just Teleportation, Zombie Stalling, and that makes it very, very good. And Paparazzi, solid D tier card, not really better than Leprechaun, and, though, because it's not because Pop Pogorazzi happens to not be a very good deck uh, against database because uh, database usually runs a lot of pressure cards like Pumpkin, lots of like Galactic Cactus for even for Gemina screws this up very badly uh, because it denies trick efficiency and Black IP is most notable for uh, denying Paparazzi efficiency <laughs> and Black IP is more is better of a counter than for Gemina to deny Paparazzi efficiency because you're straight up just you know building your own paparazzi on the plant side. Um, so it's why it's D tier. It's not completely useless, but still very good of Rust Bowl. Uh, yeah, so next card is going to be Teleport. This is the one of the best cards in the game, uh, but not the, you know, best card in the game. Uh, in, not, the, not in the game, but in the Brainy class. Because it's outclassed by Teleportation Zombie. But 
teleport is still an amazing heart. You're, this literally breaks game mechanics inside of PvZ Heroes. This is, teleport allows the Brainy class to have last say. The, the, the whole reason why you're even playing the Brainy class is because you have teleport and teleportation zombie. And, and the whole <laughs> the whole reason why you're actually playing the Brainy class is that you have teleportation zombie and teleport. And teleport is so good because you're able to, you know, just pull off so many different combos of it because you are able to play zombies after plants. So you're able to play zombies reactively to your plants, which is actually really good. And teleport, it draws you a card as well, which is insane because it draws you a card, so it cycles through your deck. So even if you don't want it, you can just play it as one and you draw an extra card. And that's pretty good, you know? You just cycle through your deck, look for some extra cards, and that's fine. And otherwise, you can still teleport in whatever God knows what you want in any other class. Like, oh, there's so many infinite combos I can talk about. If <laughs> teleport is insane because it's ran in every single Brainy deck. Like, name me one deck that doesn't run Teleport <laughs> in it. Like, name me one Brainy deck that doesn't run Teleport in it. Like, I can't think of one. Like, like what is it? There's... No, there's literally not every single every single brainy deck runs teleport. <laughs> so and teleport is just overall amazing card. Not really much to be said because this card is <laughs> just allows you to pull off so many different combos, you know. <laughs> with other class cards. Because it fixes so many problems with <laughs> so many cards in the game because of zombies not having last say. And for example, this fixes the problem with Gizzard Lizard because now you can play Gizzard Lizard in the tricks phase, which is a chickening. Rather than in the zombies phase, which you know you just commit it and your opponent can you know just play whatever they want that turn. And it fixes a lot of problems with a lot of cards because it allows those cards to have last say rather than first say, uh, like teleport fireworks, teleport Gizzard Lizard, teleport Barrel, <laughs> teleport Gark Throwing Imp. Teleport Gark Throwing Imp is probably the most notable combo with teleport. Um, Gark Throwing Imp is very very. In no, not that very. Dark Room is insanely good with teleport, and Dark Room is almost completely unusable without teleport, <laughs> which is kind of funny because the, the whole reason why Dark Room even works is because teleport exists as a card that allows you to play in the trick space. You it actually just front something with two front lane with two minions, and you're able to make two gargs, <laughs> and that's not possible if you're playing it dry because it can literally just get hammered. You know, the opponents can just you know move away their plants, whatever whatever they want to do with it, like, and they can just exploit that place so hard. But if you teleport it in, then it becomes significantly better. So, yeah, teleport A tier. Maybe you can make an argument for teleport in S tier, but I, I mean, A tier is probably the most suitable place to put it in. Very, very high A tier, though. Very, very high A tier. So, next card is Beam Me Up. So, Beam Me Up is a solid card. It makes a 2 3, which is, you know, good stats on the board. And it, you know, it makes that minion on the, as a trick. And it's this trick that makes it two free on the board, which is respectable stats. And uh, it two frees, you know, trade into everything. So it's actually very good because you're able to trade into most things, and it's a very good control card. Uh, and also can be used as a tempo card because you can just play it on the board as a two free and teleport in. So th th this is basically teleporting in the two free without having to cost up a teleport, which is actually pretty good. Used in Pogorazzi, uh used in Froster. But Froster is kind of Froster is yeah, Froster is about as relevant as relevant as Trick Stash nowadays. But I don't know. Um, but Beam Me Up still a very very solid control card uh, because you're actually able. Uh, this, another notable usage of Beam Me Up is that it actually managed it actually survives against Banana Launcher. <laughs> Beam Me Up survives against Banana Launcher, which is actually pretty cool as a you know counter to Banana Launcher in the Rainy class, so to say. Uh, it's not really a hard counter to it because of course your opponent can just play berry blast onto it next turn But then you're still getting that two damage on that banana launcher on the turn before which is still very good and bay me up can clock up lanes uh, Which is very you know good aspect of the card because you're able to just like play that two cost you, you can just have this two cost card and you're able to just you know sit back relax have that two cost card be able to you know reliably clog up a lane no matter what happens and you know that's good so uh, solid B tier card. Uh, next, cell phone zombie. Cell phone zombie is very, very limited to its usage and happens to be a better than interdimensional zombie, as they say, uh, <laughs> by a little bit, I'd say. And cell phone zombie is 
very very situational because you're only able to actually use this with Froster. So the reason why you use a cell phone zombie with Froster is because you actually you need to draw that extra card in order to get your win conditions and it's also notable that you can use it with teleport you teleport into cell phone zombie and then that clocks up a lane it's not like lane dependent because the whole reason why you don't run quasar inside of froster is not because superpowers are bad but because of the lane condition cell phone zombie has no lane condition so you can just teleport in within whatever lane you want to and it will help you draw that extra card from your deck and usually drawing bungees and Drawing bungee plumbers and drawing fruitcakes are very good. And let me explain why this is oh, god knows terrible inside of <laughs> inside of basically any other you know, like hero other than the Professor Rainstorm. Why like you're not because cell phone zombie doesn't actually help you draw into like those better control cards um <laughs> other than Professor Brainstorm because you actually have fruitcake and bungee plumber as control cards and barrel mission, which are you know very good cards. But <laughs> <laughs> with like other classes like like with Rust Bolt, what are you drawing with Cell Phone Zombie into? Like that's like Cell Phone Zombie is way too slow for Pagarati, first of all, because Pagarati wants to pull off their combo pretty fast. Well, Froster is pretty slow. Um at pulling off their combo, like by turn six. Um <laughs> and if you think about it with Immortisha, if we're using if if we're Immortisha, then we we'd be using Dog Walker, Cheese Cutter, and Cyborg as our control cards rather than trying to teleport in the cell phone zombie to do one damage and draw an art another card. Because Cyborg is almost always better. So that is that is why it's very limited in usage. It's really only useful as Professor Brainstorm. What is that other hero I'm missing? Oh yeah, HG. Oh yeah. Talk about controlling of HG, yeah, guys. Guys. You know, instead of teleporting in Deadly Imps, just teleport in 1-1. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. No, not a good idea, <laughs> okay. Okay, not a good idea with HG either. So, only useful with Professor Rainstorm. Therefore, putting it in C tier because of his very, very low versatility. And overall power level, uh, kind of mediocre anyways, inside of Froster. It's kind of the, one of the worst cards in Froster. Uh, because you can really just replace it with Quasar. And it would do fine, but, you know, Cell Phone Zombie is more optimal. Just... Because, you know, you're able to draw that card every single time. Okay, next card. Cosmic Scientist. So Cosmic Scientist is not a good card. It's a 2 cost 1, 2 bullseye. Very, very understat. This two, a 1, 2 bullseye is already understat as a 1 cost card. And you're making this a 2 cost card. <laughs> which is not which is not good. It's, it's a very, very, you know, understat for its cost. Which is a very big issue. And you're really not getting any tempo when you play Cosmic Sciences. And even though it gives you a useful trait, it's still only a random card you're conjuring. You, you can literally conjure anything as a science card. And there's a lot of science cards in, in this game. And, you know, most of the cards in this game are not good. <laughs> and most of the cards are like in E tier and F tier. <laughs> That's why I'm even making this tier list in the first place. And it's not a good idea to actually even use this in a science deck. Because you're literally just developing a 1-2 bullseye, like... What is that ever gonna synergize with your science deck? Like never, <laughs> like, like this is never synergize with your science deck because you're just literally conjuring some random crap. <laughs> Overall, terrible card. <laughs> next card. Uh, next card is actually Cryo Brain. So Cryo Brain, I like to call Cryo Brain more like Cryfro Brain. I don't like Cryo Brain in basically any deck except for like Tisha maybe. Cryo Brain is a very, very low value card and it's very specific to be only useful in control decks. And Cryo Brain is really not good <laughs> because when you play Cryo Brain, so you make one extra brain next turn and you make one extra brain again turn after that. And then, so if you think about it that way, Cryo Brain is only really profiting until after the first turn you've invested the cryo brain initially and that's usually way too slow and cryo brain it more <laughs> more you play cryo brain you more just realize that cryo brain is just taking up a slot in your deck as you know ramping rather than actually being useful control tools that help you win the game so instead of having more win conditions or have more control tools to actually help you you know get to that point you can play trickster you're trying to win with trickster faster when you're dying to everything else faster as well <laughs> Which is which makes Cryo Brain not a good card. I I mean Cryo Brain is very very limited to its usage and it's gonna get taken out of the meta pretty fast. I think like I can even downgrade Cryo Brain to like D tier right now. I, I don't know. Cryo Brain is not a good card. <laughs> Cryo Brain is not a good card. 
I, I don't like using it in any deck, basically. Like, what? Opponent please try to try Kerasops? Just cry over You know, ignore try Kerasops. Try Kerasops grows. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> bad idea. <laughs> Very bad idea. <laughs> like, and the thing is, like, people say that you can play turn 2 Cryo Brain, and then you can play turn 3 Neutron Imp Area 22. That's literally a free card combo. If you're relying on a free card combo to, for Cryo Brain to be good, you might as well not run Cryo Brain. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so specific that you need like free cards to pull it off and even the combo is itself is not even that reliable because it can just remove your neutron him anyways <laughs> and you're ignoring the turn two play for doing that <laughs> not good all right next card uh evolutionary leap <laughs> so evolutionary leap is kind of like the like fun card the, f the most like kind of fun card uh inside of the brainy class uh competitively have has zero <laughs> usefulnesses into it transforms a zombie to random zombie can cost one more you have literally no idea what this is going to transform to it could transform to something worse it can't transform to something better if you just draw a card like this is just an rng card it's for fun not really useful in the competitive scene at all like there's no really real deck that i would use to have like leap in even if i have brain vendor leap every single game probably still would not use it because the, the, you know the swing from the you know what you get from the leap is so huge because there's a lot of crap in this game so how do you even actually fix evolutionary leap? I think I think how you fix it is literally just make you know overall cards less crap, and that would make leap like significantly better, and that would make conjure cards significantly better as well because there's so there's just so much there's just too much crap in the game <laughs> that you know comes out from these like random effect cards that make them not worth it to run. So yeah. So now, Lurch for Lunch is a very, very good trick, and happens to be very useful in a couple of decks. Um, it's very useful in Tele Imps because you're able to actually, you know, to do that extra bonus attack with your Blob. And actually, it's just useful with Blob, you know. It's just useful with Blob overall because you can, because you can do an extra bonus attack with that Blob. And when you do that extra bonus attack with that Blob, uh, you're actually able to do push a lot of damage through. And it's also very used for Pagarazzi, so it's actually, so this card is actually very versatile. It's even useful with Trick Stash at 1x, you know. Um, <laughs> very, very versatile card. Might even consider moving up to Ace here right now, uh, but probably not because Lurch for Lunch does break a little bit in the early game because it, you know, doing the bonus attack in the early game, not as scalable as like in the late game. Like this, this card gets better and better later on the game goes because you, you can use it with top end. Uh, and the top end would do an insane amount of damage, so uh, happens to get better and better over the course of the game. Um, kind of not that great in the early game, and kind of breaks your hand uh, if you run it at more than two x. Uh, but Tele Ems, because because Tele Ems is basically running Deadly Ems, and Lurch Lunch just basically becomes like a two cost, like hard roof, whatever is in front of this Deadly M right here, which is uh, pr like justifies it running at three x. Otherwise, you can run it at 2x and par. You should run it at 2x and par uh, yeah, That's you know the idea of it. That's just a thirst for lunch. Very useful card. Uh, just to combine it with your blobs and your top end cards, like tr even like trickster. Maybe even trickster. I don't know. Anyways, uh, next card. The next card. <laughs> so pool shark. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know how to rate this card. This card seems to have a lot of potential because it's a free form bullseye, which is pretty, you know, average, you know, above average, like, you know, aggro stat, but I don't know. It, it's just not worth it. <laughs> it's just not worth it because it's a, it doesn't do anything other than having that bullseye trait and it gets traded by a one cost card without getting, giving you anything in return. And it, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't really know how useful Pool Shark is overall, in general. I I'd say just put it in F tier for now because I really haven't, you know, found any usage for it because it's just really not useful as a, as a, you know, a you know just a generic you know aggro card. And because the, the other turn two options that we have with the Brainy class are so much better. <laughs> also, no <one> as the <laughs> next card, which is Teleportation. <laughs> I think the main reason why you don't run Pool Shark is that you always run Teleportation Zombie as your two cost, two cost <laughs> brainy card. And, you know, Robo Master actually pointed this out. Uh, Pool Shark is out of class because brainy is not a very, you know, aggressive card and the 1 HP does not help it either. 
which I guess makes sense, right? It got his galactic active, which is kind of liability. Oh, that sparrow up that beer, so you can't use it for Professor Brainstorm. Like, I would love, I would love to use this if, um, in Trick Stash, if if this had like two health, because then it would have survived a uh, barrel of that beer's explosion, which is pretty good, man. You know. Anyways. <laughs> Anyway, it's a card. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I don't have. Seriously, just don't know any real usage of pool shark in any legit decks. <laughs> haven't found any usage of it. Haven't found it ever useful. Next card. So now this card is by far the most broken card in existence. <laughs> Other than like maybe fruit cake. I don't know. This card is stupid, guys. Like. <laughs> This is literally the easiest S tier card ever. I don't know, maybe under the fruitcake, maybe fruitcake might. I don't know. <laughs> this is one of easily the best cards in the game. Okay, <laughs> this is guys. This is a two cost one five bullseye, which is already very good stats. Already very good stats as a two cost card because it has bullseye and five health. It m allows you to literally play all your minions. After the after playing play them, like what? Like who even invented teleportation zombie? Like what in the heck is? Literally, you can. This is literally infinite teleport. <laughs> who even invented this? This is so stupid. <laughs> this is so stupid. Like you're literally able to play everything after the plants play, which is the whole re reason why you know plants have you know less stats than zombies. You know plants in general have less stats than zombies, and because. Of the fact that plants are having last say in terms of minions, and so therefore they have to use like they have to use weaker minions in comparison to zombie minions, you know, which are usually you know higher stats and higher value. <laughs> this just literally flips the whole board around because now plants have to play around zombies playing afterwards. <laughs> I. I I don't know why anyone ever disagree on this being an S tier because this is for real, for real, easily one of the best cards in the game, probably top 10, I don't know, maybe like top 5 even, <laughs> for like the most broken cards in the game. Look, th this card did not even need a 5 health, like even even if this was a 2 cost 1 4, this would still be a very good card. <laughs> this would still be a very very good card even if it's a one, 2 cost 1 4. <laughs> probably still A tier, uh, I don't know. Probably still S tier, actually, if it's a 2 cost 1 4. I don't know, this card's just busted. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> it also has Bullseye, yeah, it also has Bullseye. <laughs> this is definitely not fair. And it, and it doesn't get traded by any one cost cards. Like, Drone Engineer, like, we'll be getting onto Drone Engineer later. The one problem with Drone Engineer is that it gets traded by a 1, by a 2 2. <laughs> this trades into, you know, 2 cost cards and above, anyways. <laughs> it's, it's a 1 5. <laughs> Anyways. Enough rambling of Teleportation Zombie. Card is. Absolutely broken. Definitely S tier. <laughs> uh, next card, Transformation Station. This card has absolutely no purpose in running in any of the decks. Uh, this has absolutely no business in any of the decks other than maybe King Leap. <laughs> I don't know. This is a very unreliable environment. You have to make sure your, your uh, card survives to actually activate this ability, even though it looks like you can activate it every single turn. It might not necessarily guarantee that minion surviving that turn when it transforms. Uh, the reason why leap is actually better, the, the trick, the trick leap is actually better, is because you're actually able to just use tr a leap on a minion uh, with you know already you know a, a minion that is already hurt. <laughs> you know you can use leap on a minion that's already hurt. Like maybe you can use it on a crowd yeti that has one health left. So you can make that crowd yeti that was about to die to like a one cost card that they just run to do to a six cost card, which is kind of a value. But transformation station. Here comes the big problem with transformation station: is that you only get value after your minion survives that one lane that you put your transformation station into, and that is a huge problem to even accomplish because transformation station gives you a random card every single turn, and it, and it's not specific enough. It's not specific enough, and you have to, and it really your opponents can easily play around this because this really is only useful when you are already ahead on the board so it's kind of a win more card and win more cards usually in this game are not good <laughs> uh because uh temple cards in this game are so strong that win more cards are usually not that strong in this game in general in the competitive scene at least uh so transformation station is just not useful it doesn't really do anything <laughs> and plus and plus the trick leaf gives 
gives you an extra card as well because it draws a card <laughs> after you use it, which is a like a huge positive, honestly, for you know regular leap. All right, next card. So I wanted this card to be good, but unfortunately, it's just not. It it. it Drone Engineer seems like such a strong card, transforming all your science cards into blooming cards suddenly, like everything starts to suddenly, you know, gain stats so quickly, like a blooming card. Unfortunately, I found that it, it really just doesn't work. Uh, it really just doesn't work. Let me explain why. So Drone Engineer is a 2 cost 1 4, which happens to be its problem, I don't know. It's just a 2 cost 1 4, which means it gets traded by a 2 2, which is a humongous problem. and. This is basically the same problem as Swashbuckler and, you know, getting traded by these, you know, 2-2s two -two, like Juggernaut and even just like Click B who would kill this because it's a, because you only need 2 attack from last turn and 2 attack from this turn to kill Drone Engineer. Honestly, if Drone Engineer had 5 health, maybe Drone Engineer would be good if, if it had 5 health because then it can actually develop some actual tempo on the board like it will be like that same amount of health as Teleportation Zombie, which I think is probably appropriate for like Drone Engineer. As of right now, Drone Engineer not really useful even in science decks because you really don't, you know, want to play this, you know, very low value like block. Even if, if they don't front it, it's just going to charge your opponent's block meter as well, <laughs> which is another another problem. <laughs> and, and it you know, relies on your other minions already staying alive to allow them to scale. It's just not reliable enough, honestly. As a tempo card, stick this in E tier because it has, still has some merit to it. Uh, you run it with like Cybolt, but honestly, science science decks nowadays they just opt to you know run for gadget scientists or just interdimensional zombie. Either or, uh, drone engineer is just the <laughs> just not it's just not it it's just not it. Guys, guys is the main science. Yeah, I already explained the pro main problem is that it trades with one draw. That was already explained, so I suggested that this having 5 health would make this significantly better. So, the next card is Brain Vendor. So, Brain Vendor is actually useful in the meta. I know, it sounds weird that Brain Vendor is actually now competitively viable, <laughs> and that it's purely just because of Toss being, being a deck now in the meta. <laughs> and Brain Vendor's synergy is basically with in Toss, which is Tisha of some size, which is an Tisha deck. Uh, it basically synergizes with Secret Agent very well because it's a, because it's essentially a zero coster that you can just scoop up right away um, and play it for 5-4 and it synergizes with Blob. So it synergizes with Blob because it gives Blob immediately a free extra bon uh, free extra not bonus attack but free extra attack immediately and this actually happens to be very useful in the reigning class because it's in the same class that teleport exists in, so you can actually just teleport this in as a 2-1. Uh, it's a zero cost 2-1, and then you can just clog the lane, which is actually still fine, you know, as a card itself. And that's why you actually run more copies of Brain Render uh, than Moonwalker, because it actually breaks less overall against database. If you're against rank, I would suggest running the free Moonwalker to Brain Render version, because you're not really needing as much defense. And uh, Moonwalker is more reliable as gaining you tempo, but Brain Render is giving you a lot of defense as well, defensive value, uh, even if, you know, with your teleports. And it's pretty perfect with Blob as well. Like, this is a great, great card with Blob because it gives your Blobs, you know, that, you know, just, you know, free, you know, extra attack. And it's just an overall pretty cool card, honestly. Oh, Roadmaster said it's a cool card. <laughs> I don't know why we're saying the same things. But, you know, being able to, you know, use this with Secret Agent is just, you know, you know, a unique thing with, with Immortisha, which helps it, you know, become... Useful <laughs> for Tisha at least, but the one of the... but here's another uh, problem with Brain Vendor in the uh, in kind of like the other heroes is that it doesn't synergize enough and it it, it really works way too well, um, not way too well, but very well with Secret Agent that makes it worth running in, in Tisha and usually with other heroes like. I don't really, you know, see like the health buffing tricks that is gonna make Brain Vendor that useful. Uh, other than maybe like in like Eggma Chum Blob, maybe as a father for like your Blob and your like, you know, you know, trying to get your uh, brains, you know, kind of value while you know benefiting from a sports trade of the <laughs> Brain Vendor. So that's Eggma Chum Blob. You know, you use Chum Champion on top of a Brain Vendor because Brain Vendor is basically a zero cost sports card. Uh, while also giving you extra brains for a uh, blob combo. Um, that's basically the only uses for Brain Vendor. Eh. Versatility is very low. You really have to make, you know, a build around it. 
and overall, it's okay, you know, nothing really that special. Okay, so now, now we have to get onto the hot garbage. Guys, please just stop using freaking Duck Stash in your mustache decks. Duck Stash is a terrible card, guys. I, I, I can't. Duck Stash is just horrible. <laughs> I don't... No, this card is so bad. It's a free cost, a free two. Why? Two cost free two is already bad enough for zombies. And now we're making this a free cost card that conjures you random mustaches? Come on now. Card is so trash. <laughs> Tra this card is unbelievably overrated as a card in general. And it's completely almost useless. <laughs> Even though Mustache Waxer is viable, do not use this, even with a full board. This is the whole problem with Duck Stash, is that you actually, it, like this evolution like ability is not even that relevant. Because you're only really getting that plus two, plus two. And what really, you know, good mustache, you know, mustaches are you evolving this on top on, except for like Quasar, maybe. <laughs> And the answer is basically none. And usually, you really just want to separate the duck stash from the other mustache, anyways, because you want to be able to maintain that board presence as a mustache deck. Anyways, this this has absolutely no. <laughs> this is absolutely no merit, honestly. <laughs> it's really just useless. You know, the free costs free to. It just gets free traded by literally anything if you don't have another mustache on the board already and <laughs> come on now it's just useless come on <laughs> easy after you. all right next card uh electrician so electrician is actually more useful than duck stash even though it looks like a pretty bad card then electrician is a bad card because the whole problem with electrician is that it's even though it's a lurch for lunch like lurch for lunch is in b tier but this is just lurch for lunch with a 2-2 body is that this is a pre-committed lurch for lunch the the whole problem is that you already committed to playing that lurch for lunch in the electrician and usually your opponent can easily play around that electrician and you know just deny you know deny that lurch for lunch value that you're trying to you know just do a bonus like your blob like is your opponent literally just gonna leave that blob lane open knowing that your gravestone is an electrician <laughs> like almost never <laughs> and the whole problem is that what well, even when you commit it as a minion it's not good enough because the you know the bonus attack is a pre-committed you know factor of you already playing that free brains and committing to having to be forced to use that bonus attack. Lurch for Lunch is so much better because you can use that bonus attack whenever you want to. You can just use that bonus attack if you want to or not. You just like yes or no. You, you know you two brains left leave over, you use it or you don't use it. Electrician, when you play this card you have to, you know, just do a bonus attack with something. And that bonus attack is usually not gonna be worth it because if you're using this on the electrician itself, it's just a, you know, two extra damage. <laughs> And usually not worth it, but the one redeeming quality of Electrician is that its usefulness with uh, Secret Agent. It was considered in Toss until, you know, Lurch for Lunch is just obviously better. Uh, you know, Electrician was considered in Toss because of its synergy with Secret Agent. You can scoop it up, and then now it becomes a free cost 5 5 that does the bonus attack. Now it's like a mini trickster, as Fry says it. I know it sounds kind of crazy because I'm copying like what Fry says, but it becomes a mini trickster in the gravestone and actually pretty decent when you do get it. But unfortunately, this is completely garbage. <laughs> when, when, because you really have to develop your blob first, which is you usually teleport in your blobs, and then you do your blur full. And you use your bonus attack afterwards, and that's basically the biggest problem with electrician. The pre committing, I don't, know. I don't know how to fix this car, honestly. Maybe just giving this one extra attack would fix it. Probably not. <laughs> the pre commit, you know, problem still exists, even if you buff the stats of this card. Uh, don't know how to fix it. It's, just pro it's probably best to just, you know, retain this as a bad card. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, next card. So, Fun Dead Razor is actually very useful as a card as well. So comparatively to like Lurch for Lunch, Vanilla Razor is also very good because uh, it happens to be that drawing with drawing on the drawing two cards on the zombie side is actually so much better on the plant side because with plants, Flourish only draws you the cards and your zombies can still respond to that Flourish because you played literally no tempo on that on that you know Flourish. And Fun Dead Razor, on the other hand, 
you're not actually you're actually able to draw afterwards i i I don't know why you know drawing cards on the zombies are is like so much better than just drawing in the on the plant side. Possibly because combos are better on the zombie side, and possibly more because of you know. I don't know how to explain this, but possibly showing that you know zombie control overall works better, and overall combo decks are way better from zombies, and that makes Funded Razor worth it. Don't know. It's very useful in Trick Stash because you're actually able to ramp up into that you know. Able to get that free ex free brains, you can play that fun that razor. You know, just keep drawing, playing more combo pieces. That's why it's useful. Trick stash. Uh, why it's useful Pagarati? Very important card, Pagarati. One of the most important cards in Pagarati is that you're actually using fun that razor to draw that combo up, and to actually able to you know get that combo reliably, you have to have some card draw, and also useful. Um, in what kind of decks? Like in Eggma Tisha. This is actually also useful in Eggma Tisha because you're trying to, you know, just draw extra cards for extra control cards. Uh, overall, Funded Razor is not useful outside of control archetypes, therefore, it's rated like uh, lower than Lurch for Lunch. Uh, so, yeah, Funded Razor goes into solid beats here. No objections right here by anyone. Alright, next. So, we have Gentleman Zombie as the next card right here. So, Gentleman Zombie, uh, its usage is very limited even though its power level is kind of high in froster uh so like there's a new version of froster going around right now where it's used gentleman zombie so the idea is that you have turn free gentleman and then you have literally any trick that in froster that's going to protect it like <laughs> basically anything in froster is going to protect that gentleman zombie from dying on turn three and then on turn four you teleport guard for him which is you know kind of a funny combo but i have actually you know seen this combo several times already uh, when I was doing some testing and it actually sort of you know works um it sort of does actually work and it's but it's not really the most useful ca card like in the game like in the brainy class necessarily because you know uh, this is a free cost 2 2 and the biggest problem with gentleman zombie is that this dies to two attack minion Gentleman Zombie actually used to be a free cost 2 free, which was actually way too powerful because most things with, you know, Gentleman Zombie could survive against most things as a free health minion. This as a tomb health minion now is significantly worse because now you actually have to, you know, actively, you know, just babysit it and, you know, try to make it, you know, give more value. Usually if Gentleman Zombie stays alive for more than one turn, you are profiting immediately on the turn after you played it. Because you're getting two brains back on the turn you played it already, which means uh, you played a one cost two two and you get two brains. You know, free cost two two and you get two brains. So basically, this is a one cost two two. But then if you make it survive one turn, now you're definitely profiting because you're getting two extra brains a turn after, which is significantly better. <laughs> Anyways, this card surviving is the most important aspect of it, and that's why it's good at Froster because you're actually able to use, just use Free Kick and Final Mission to protect it from being removed. And when this gets when this survives, you get a lot of value out of it. Uh, just like Mustache Waxer, how how Mustache Waxer is so broken to Trick Stash is just because you're able, just because Mustache Trick uh, Waxer is able to survive by itself, and that grows every single time. It's while still giving you you know that brain mana cheating and able to swarm the board uh, makes you know wax worth it and this is sort of the like waxer but worse because it doesn't grow in health um so yeah but even though it's a more reliable ability if you have use it with roaster because usually you're going for more like trick based removal rather than actually swarming the board uh with roaster so yeah solid d tier card not very first tell <laughs> this is not good in Rortisha. there's literally nothing that really helps this thing live on turn three uh with Igma, uh not like Morticia, but in Morticia. <laughs> like other than extinction event, I don't know. The extinction event doesn't make the survive enough. <laughs> it's like, bleh. not very good. With Immortisha, Immortisha, Immortisha is the deck is the kind of hero that, ironically, I would run Cryobrain instead of Gentleman Zombie because actually ramping to a teleport zombot combo is actually better than actually just getting two more brains in the next turn. <laughs> Happens to be very awkward that Cryobrain is actually just better with Immortisha. <laughs> so yeah, who don't use this with Pagarati? This was actually originally inside of Pogarazzi before it got added into database, uh, but it got cut for Lurch for Lunch because Lurch for Lunch is overall better, uh, and you know, scales better with your Pogarazzi as well, you know, just doing extra bonus attack with it. But this actually still works in, Pogar in Pogarazzi, even if, if you replace the bonus attack, works pretty well, you know, giving you those extra brains. 
I'm just D tier card because it's not really a power level, really not that high, versatility not that high either, but is usable. Yeah, that's my point. Alright, so the next card is, um, <laughs> so now this card, now let's just talk about this card for a second. This card is completely useless in basically any deck. Why would you play a free cost one free? <laughs> Guys, free cost one free, don't even mess. <laughs> what the heck are you doing? <laughs> the, one free is literally a stat of like a headstone carver, and headstone carver is really not a good card because because it's literally just a one free. If char charging opponent's block meter has l and its ability is drawing an extra card. If you <laughs> guys, this is the whole reason why fight flyer is not a good card draw card is because it provides literally basically nobody on the board. This is literally. <laughs> Not ever gonna give you actual value because you're literally just pre-committing this as a gravestone as opposed to a finite razor. Even though Kai Flyer can give you two cards in the span of two turns, this is a pre-committed Kai Flyer, and if this just hits face, it's just charging your opponent's block meter, which is completely horrible. You know, and this doesn't provide anything to actually help you win the game because you're just spamming a one like a free cost one free is just not useful. <laughs> just gets retraded too easily. And you don't draw those cards reliably either. <laughs> Easy after your card. For <laughs> you should never use this card. Um, I say you can just recycle it, alright? Okay, here's another crap card. So, Nebula. <laughs> so, I actually rated Nebula lower than uh, Transformation Station. Nebula is just a very, very, you know, high roll card in general. So, why is Nebula so bad? Because you're investing three brains the turn before, and then you're only getting two brains extra the next turn. Like, if this was a two cost card that gives you two brains this, the next turn, I would see this being, you know, usable at least. Right now, at its current state, this is an F tier card. Look, you have to literally get, you know, <laughs> to profit off of Nebula ramping, you have to literally, you know, play a Berry Treasure, uh, and then play another Berry Treasure, and then you place, like, another, like, one cost or zero cost or like a swappy or a brain vendor on top of it. So it becomes a very specific combo and you're not really ramping to anything but like maybe like Mechasaurus. I don't even know what you're ramping to like BMR. Very very unreliable card because you have to spend so many resources to invest into just one nebula and when you draw multiple nebulas just <laughs> you, you almost never want to draw multiple nebulas as well and this is a horrible card in itself. <laughs> Because it literally doesn't work with anything without a fusion. Because you're only getting two extra brains <laughs> the turn after. Like, why would you not just play two, like, three brains over a tempo <laughs> instead of, you know, playing a free cost environment? Anyways. Card sucks. <laughs> Nick, though. So, Moonwalker is a useful card uh, with a uh, tish up some size at the end. Um, because it's a free cost 4 4. And that is very good tempo. You know, free cost 4 4. Like, usually, there's nothing in the game that has, you know, free trades with a free cost. Actually, no, there's nothing in the game that has a free cost for, for sorry. <laughs> so, what it means by free trade is that uh, something with, like, just more health and stats that are actually going to be able to kill it in one shot. There's nothing in the game that, you know, free trades against Moonwalker, and that makes it a great, you know, contender for a tempo card in Toss, because now, this stays alive, because your opponent is usually going to ignore that Moonwalker, or they have to spend, like, or they have to, you know, get a bad trade into it with, like, one cost card or a two cost card that's just going to die into a Moonwalker, um, and then your Moonwalker stays alive, and then you can just copy the stats with a Swimmer, which is actually really good. Moonwalker... Uh, is a very strong tempo card in general. Uh, the wrong way to use Moonwalker is to try to use this as a dancing card. I don't know. <laughs> the wrong way to use it is like to try to use it as a dancing card. <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> Do not try that. Uh, the best way to use it is basically use it as like a swimmer fodder, as a as, because synchronized swimmer usually is worth it once uh, it meets a uh, four attack and four health threshold. That's what we've really been finding out uh, during testing, actually, that Synchronized Swimmer happens to be very good when it's on the threshold of 4 attack, 4 health, or above. Usually, Swimmer is worth it when you play it for 4 attack, or slash 4 health, and above, and that makes that just makes Moonwalker a very you know strong combo with Synchronized Swimmer as a whole. Otherwise, is it flexible? It's not useful on Teleimps for obvious reasons. Because, of course, teleporting imps is better than, you know, just using a Moonwalker and Teleimps. 
Um, I already said why would you not use this as a dancing card? Not a good idea. Uh, <laughs> dancing synergy, like you don't really want dancing synergy as a free cost card because dancing synergy usually relies on you playing, you know, these cheap little minions on the board, like this going on and aerobic instructor moonwalker too expensive for a dancing deck um in general so that's not useful with professor rainstorm not useful with, uh with tell ms useful with immortisha what's the other hero uh wait what's the other hero again wait yeah professor rainstorm yeah hg with immortisha oh rust bolt <laughs> with rust bolt this is not useful either because the <laughs> science synergy with rust bolt oh great <laughs> like what what benefit are you gonna get from running moonwalker rust bolt with pogarazzi literally zero and if you're trying to run this with like science synergy with rust bolt <laughs> rust bolt is just not a good hero anyways since you run moon to run anything <laughs> and usually just really not worth it anyways It's just a D tier card, honestly. Not really much much to say. It's a tempo, the tempo card as a whole. I don't know what to say about it. It's just strong tempo. Not really anything else. <laughs> Works well with somewhere. Uh, yeah. Next card. So next card is Mustache Monument. So Mustache Monument looks like a very very powerful card, like Valk. Um, <laughs> but in fact, Mustache Monument is just you know inefficient <laughs> as a card in general even though i'm putting this in c tier does not mean that i think it's very good again it i am not going to put a card above b tier if it's not versatile and mustache monument is exactly the definition of invert of very 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 bad versatility because this card is completely useless if you're not using it with professor brainstorm and it's only barely useful if you use it with professor brainstorm to you know double out your trickster uh output damage or activate a valk <laughs> it's way too specific and usually trying to you know draw these combo pieces with mustache monument is not worth time to do so because valk is not a good card anyways by itself and trying to you know overly rely on drawing these combo pieces is just not efficient enough because once you start double drawing mustache monument you're really really in big trouble because you really only need one mustache monument ever to win a game uh so usually you just want either one or two i don't i don't know you probably just want one one at this point <laughs> because it's really really bad when you draw multiple mustache monuments <laughs> because you're literally just playing, playing, you know, free cost one fives on the board without much, you know, you know, board presence. This is honestly, how do I fix this card? I don't know. I, I would just keep it as is. <laughs> this, this concept of a card is just not, not a good game design, honestly. Because you know, it's so freaking broken to Falcon. It's so bad with any other card. Anyways, mustache money with the C tier. Alright, next card. Regifting Zombie. <laughs> so regifting is just... Regifting is just honestly not good enough, not efficient enough as a card draw hard because Fund Eraser exists and Fund Eraser costs the exact same amount. So regifting was amazing as a 2 cost card because it was a 2 cost, free 2, and draw you two more cards and usually drawing two cards as zombies again we've mentioned already drawing two cards as zombies is usually way better than drawing two cards as plants and that's because zombies have much better combo <laughs> comboing power uh so this was absolutely busted when it was a two cost card but now it, now it's a three cost card you're really just playing a free cost free two which is definitely not worth it <laughs> which is definitely not worth it understand free cost card and doesn't really help any deck other than Valk, and Valk is not a good archetype nowadays. And really, like, what what deck are you using regifting in? Like, I'm not using it in Tell the Imps, not using it in Pogarazzi, not really using it in Toss either. <laughs> like, there's literally no decks other than like maybe like Valk to run regifting in. And Valk, backyard, already explained the mustache monument. So therefore, regifting overall has like literally no place in the meta. It has some redeeming qualities of you, you know, just drawing some extra cards, so it's easier. Anyways, really just not a good card in general. Alright, next card. Rocket Science. So, okay, Rocket Science is worse than Sham Rocket. Okay, let's let's keep this as that, okay? Rocket Science is worse than Sham Rocket as a card general, 
but it's actually more usable than Jam Rocket in the competitive meta. So this is very contradicting, but let me explain this for you guys. Even though this car is actually less efficient than Sham Rocket, because if you haven't already, you can probably just watch like Fry's like Sham Rocket rant, even though his suggestion to fix it is definitely not the way to fix it. <laughs> that I would agree that Sham Rocket overall is more efficient than Rocket Science. But Rocket Science is D tier and Sham Rocket is only E tier. Why is that? So because Rocket Science is useful in the deck that you, that deck that needs the rocket science to survive, and that's in Igmatisha. <laughs> Igmatisha needs rocket science to stay alive, which is Igmatisha control, uh, for those who don't know it, uh, because you really need to have the hard removal <laughs> as, you know, that, you know, control player that it makes it important for rocket science to exist in Igmatisha. It happens to be that Sham Rocket is not in a good class from the plant side, because it's really in the Guardian class, which, you know, not very controlly. other than maybe you can say that Guardian is control when you use it with Funny Knight, but, you know, it's way too slow, <laughs> and it's really not helping you set up any combos, and really, the, the main problem with uh, Sham Rocket is that lack of, you know, these four or more attack, you know, minion targets in the DB, but Rocket Science has a couple of targets, uh, like, even just, like, a grown you know, Triceratops or just like anything from that's supposed to be buffed by onion rings and most notably Rocket Science counters um strike through. Rocket Science most um what do you call it? The most notable thing that this counters is Elderberry and Astrocado, which makes um Rocket Science, you know, just more useful because the four or more attack minions are more relevant on a plant side, so <laughs> it's very awkward. Even if Rocket Science is less efficient than Jam Rocket, it's placed in a higher tier because it's just more relevant and more useful <laughs> as a zombie card. <laughs> just how PvC Heroes works because of, you know, different classes. How they work in PvC Heroes very complex game because <laughs> because a plant side and zombie side play completely differently <laughs> and play on you know two completely different bases. So. And that's also why you can't really like, compare compare plant decks like like zombie decks because you know they have completely you know just different bases <laughs> and really they're just com like inherently different. So trick or treater, this is a f this is not a good card either. <laughs> this is also not a good card. Um, so trick or treater is a free cost for two, two free, which is very weak on turn three because you're literally getting no immediate value, and the only value you're actually getting is after you play that first trick in one in you know just one turn and that one you know that one treat it's probably not gonna make up for the fact you just played a, a two free on the board <laughs> a free cost two free on the board that's probably not gonna make up for the fact you play it's a three cost two free on the board and honestly you're just losing way too much tempo to actually you know use trick or treater <laughs> because you you're getting either help or like create like story retreat i know these cards are good but you know you're just losing way too much tempo on playing this like free cost useless card and you can't even use that healthy tree immediately because you, have, you already played that trick first. And if you assume that we have enough mana to actually play that, you know, tree, that means that this already survived the turn before, which usually does not happen because it only has free health. And we're talking about the Discord competitive meta. Literally, most things would take this out, and this can easily be exploited by opponent just playing it like a free nut on the board if you play it on turn three. And this really is not useful as a card in general. Very, very you know, low power. Did not. Do not use it. So Warm Hole Gatekeeper. Now the Warm Hole Gatekeeper is useful in 31 deck, which is called Simor Tempo, and otherwise it's completely useless as well. <laughs> um Honestly, Warm Hole Gatekeeper is not a very good card. Even though it's a very good stats, it's a free cost two five bullseye, and you draw and each player draws an extra card in return. Um the whole problem with Gatekeeper is that it just feeds your opponent's cards without actually winning the game yourself. <laughs> which, you know happens to be not that great in general um and its only usefulness is being a science card i would say and that's really the only real deck that even uses wormhole gatekeeper anymore i think is are just science decks right and i don't know how to explain this card but it's just a card draw card and it doesn't really do anything other than just draw cards for both your opponent as well so i, I, don't, I don't like the fact that it just feeds your opponent's theme anyways and plus, the, and plus, Dino Wars are so much more prevalent than Dino, Dino Wars on the plant side are so much more prevalent than Dino Wars on the zombie side. And 
that's another problem with feeding your opponent's cards. If you ha if you're playing Wormhole Gatekeeper against Triceratops or Velociraptor's Hunter, this is horrible. You're just giving them extra stats for, for Triceratops, giving them extra stats for Velociraptor's Hunter, and even against Lyra Plurion, you're just giving them extra stonks in their deck. <laughs> you know, it's not a good idea. And if you're going against Lyra Plurion, usually if you're going to Lyra Plurion, then you're probably going against Bean deck, right? So <laughs> that's just giving you giving Admiral Leaf and Bean extra beans to combo with as well, which is why it's not good. It's just a liability of giving your opponent cards because its plants are having so much more, you know, lines on Dino War cards as well. Okay, so the next card on the list is going to be Zomblob. So this is one of the cards that are going to get upgraded from B tier to A tier. Uh, so Blob is actually, you know, probably the best finisher in the in the Brainy class, actually, uh, other than Trickster. <laughs> And why is Zomblob so good? Because you're able to actually just teleport this in in any lane that you actually have tempo in. And then you're able to just combo your opponent down with virtual lunches or whatever you want to do that. And Zomblob is so good because you're able to evolve it on anything and this will have an insane amount of attack and, you know, still have 5 health. You know, even if you evolve this on just like a 1 cost card, it's a, you know... 3 cost card that you evolve on a 1 cost card and on turn 3 that's still 4 attack 5 health which is respectable amount of stats you know and this synergizes the most with tele imps because you're able to evolve the blob on top of these like little you know useless imps that your inferring imp is throwing your inferring imp is a 1 attack and after it fronted something and it survived and that's an amazing you know place to use on blob in because then you can just teleport in on top of that and now it's going to do a ton of damage and you know just get overall more bodies and why is this useful with toss basically you can just bl evolve blob on something and then you can copy that blob stats <laughs> with a swimmer which is actually kind of broken and we'll get to swimmer uh in the tier list later <laughs> and i'm actually gonna uh put swimmer in a very high tier in the tier list because swimmer is a very good card honestly in the meta and zombie blob just helps you know finish off that game with that full board you have the full board now what you're gonna do is teleport this in in an empty like not it would lean without a plant blocking and you're able to actually put the game as a tempo deck so useful in toss useful in tele imps overall the best finisher in the rainy class other than trickster probably better than trickster actually because trickster is only really viable with one hero maybe two if you count Morticia, but blob is much more better uh, because uh, it's useful with Tele Imps, which is a very good deck, and also useful with Toss. So it's versatile enough, so therefore we're giving it this A tier. Uh, overall, power level is A tier, versatility kind of B tier, but yeah. I'll rate this overall A tier. So draw major, <laughs> 4 cost, 4 4, dry zombie, no abilities, completely useless. <laughs> this has absolutely no abilities, and that's why it's going right into the F tier, alright. <laughs> Wait, where am I, where did I write this? I'll write this this. Um right here. Okay, right here. <laughs> the four cost the four cost four four with zero abilities, not a good card at all. <laughs> alright, next. Mad Chemist. This is not a good card draw card. Mad Chemist gives you a random trick after you play that first trick, which is actually not worth it. Um because you're playing this, it's the same. It's the same problem with Trigger Treater. You're playing a understat minion for the cost of you know what you're paying for, and then you're not getting a very useful card in the return. And this is even worse than Trigger Treater because you're actually getting a because you're getting any trick from the game. Like you're able to get any trick from the game, and that is like so you know swingable. You know what? What I mean by swingable is that. What comes out from this mad chemist is completely unpredictable and you have absolutely no control over it having synergy with your own deck or not and it has absolutely no purpose in being any science deck. This this card has absolutely no business in basically doing in any of our decks because it doesn't provide any, you know, certain purpose as a card in general. You just draw some random tricks like what what is this useful for? Like, I don't get it. No, it's very inconsistent as well. Very, very draw dependent not a good idea so yeah Matt gem is easy f tier next card mountain clamper same problem with um draw major four cost four four no abilities 
<laughs> usually four cost cards you want them to be winning the game you want the four cost card to be able to have some ability to affect the board to be able to you know help you win the game this does nothing it's a four cost for four bullseye and that's it and you can only use this in the heights lane honestly how to buff this card like how you buff the mountain climber is basically just make this a free free and gets one one on height now then it, it then it breaks less but it's still not a very good card for obvious reason but it's just making it overall better you know anyways next card parasol zombie so parasol is useful in exactly one deck which is paparazzi so why is this actually useful in paparazzi it's literally to counter to kabloom class so the problem with playing teacher is that it has very low health and your opponent can usually just use a very blast or a banana bomb to just kill it and that's not good because that's not good enough because now you can't just let all your teachers die to very blasts and banana bombs right so you use parasol to protect them and you're able to actually just use this parasol as a big body to protect everyone everything uh, that you want to protect uh, from tricks, which is important for Pogorazzi because you actually just well because you're, with Pogorazzi usually you're only developing that like first minion, uh, like that Pogorazzi or that teacher you grew a lot, you know, for that exhaust. And that makes Parasol worth it to run in Pogorazzi. Uh, problem with Parasol is that it's not really useful in any other deck other than Pogorazzi. Maybe you can use it with Tell the Imps because it counters Drinking Violet, but I've tested it before, I don't like it because. Parasol really doesn't, is not an imp, which is a kind of a liability, I'd say. But but as a card, it is usable. So I'm just scrolling down right here just to, you know, get uh, the new ones. So this is Parasol. So Parasol is rated in D tier uh, right over here. Just like that. And giving a trickable to a minion, a trickable is not, <laughs> a trickable is a pretty overrated ability in this game, honestly. Did not just say a trickable, oh, so useful. Okay, next one, thinking crap. I like to call this card thinking crap. This card is completely worthless. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> it's a, if you think about it, without teacher, you're paying six brains to actually play two superpowers. So you're paying basically three brains to pay to play a superpower <laughs> and that superpower you don't even get to control what that superpower is so you actually have to <laughs> and it's not good it's just not good the overall value is just way too low it's a thinking cat i don't know how to fix this card because if you put this as a, because if you make this a free cost card then it makes a funded razor like uncomparable because drawing superpowers is almost always better than drawing cards so i don't know how to fix thinking cap honestly like what just make <laughs> Just make the superpowers free. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to fix Linking Cap, honestly. <laughs> Overall, the card has really no, you know, redeeming qualities in itself. I would just break this as a E tier card. Uh, because it's still mildly useful when you're, like, kind of out of steam. I don't know. It's still not very good. <laughs> Next card. Oh my gosh. How much? How many cards do we have left to go? so many cards in break <laughs> okay triplication so this card is complete ass guys do not use triplication what is this the four cost conjure free cards <laughs> guys you were conjuring free cards at the cost of four come on man how can they mess this up so hard even if this is a two cost card it's still not useful <laughs> even if this costs like half I'll run it this right now. It's still not useful. I'll probably still not run, still not run it because it's still very, very draw dependent and it's still very unuseful. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, this is easily F tier card. Never use them. What are you drawing that, like, you have so much swing inside that triplication. You're sacrificing not playing any tempo for four brains to conjure an imp, a zombie, and a guard. Tell me what scenario you're in that that actually helps you win the game. <laughs> Almost no scenarios. Therefore, easy F tier. Alright, next card. Next card is Cops Commando. This I, I don't even know why they made this card playable as <laughs> an, an actual card. Literally no <laughs> literally no traits, no abilities. Five cost six five, dry zombie sickness. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> So, I don't know why, I, I don't think I have to explain it every single time when a zombie is just dry zombie with stats. 
<laughs> every single if I have to explain that every single time, it'd be kind of really annoying. So I, I don't even know. Like maybe I could just you know make a template of just why no, these high like these high cost like dry stat minion zombies are just bad. <laughs> Anyways. Main reason is just because if you play it, your opponent can combo you down very easily with any other like their more efficient, you know, a aggressive options. And Cops and Commando like does nothing. <laughs> this does nothing other than just being a six five. And that's why this card is going right into F tier. Uh, it's going right here. All right, next card on the list: Gadget Sciences. So Gadget Sciences is a useful card inside of the traditional classics science decks so why am i saying traditional classic science decks because the new science decks are the ones using the interdimensional zombie trying to get that you know tempo up on the board and then you're actually trying to win the game by gaining more tempo gadget sciences on the other hand is you know the classical approach uh to winning with science cards is basically trying to you know figure out like Keep buffing up your minions to a certain amount of point and then you know use the gadget sciences you know to combo your opponent down uh and just win the game while that's when you play gadget sciences that's like with like cybolt <laughs> which is a very unreliable deck because <laughs> I, I don't even want to talk about cybolt nowadays because cybolt is just crap so do not <laughs> and gadget sciences overall as a card has been falling off in the meta because of the fact of the rise of interdimensional zombie as a science energy card anyways so it's just low seed here. It's really only useful with like Immortesha and Rust Bowl. It's arguable this is D tier. Like this is easily arguably a D tier. Which is gadget scientist. And we is not good. Some people are saying that Cyborg Tempo is kinda of decent ish. So the thing is that with Cyborg Tempo you have you have so many breaks with Soundward Tempo. You're just playing like Soundward Tempo is way too slow, actually, and has and it loses to itself a lot of times because you're drawing like all these combo pieces, like Cryo Brains. You're drawing Maniacals multiple times, and you're drawing Gadget Sciences multiple times, and you're drawing into Bounty Hunter multiple times. Now that, those are just liabilities towards a combo, and you know Gadget Sciences doesn't really have like these like really good things uh, with these science cards and that's why it is low in seats here okay next card guard mime so guard mime really like this is just an fc card there's n really no you know efficient way to use guard mime i've tried it multiple times already tried it with, with like gadget sciences like cardiologist combo did not work out um tried it with trickster did not work out tried it with Tried it with like just generic like even I I've actually even at a point put Garg Gargmime inside of Tele to try to fa find out whether Lurch for Lunch is worth it. <laughs> Answer is no, definitely not. Gargmime is just not a good card because it's a it's just a five cost five seven and it only works if you're, if you are actually playing bonus attacks and bonus attacks are so inefficient to activate other than maybe like gadget sciences and that's why it just makes a Gargmime not very good. Uh, even though I've seen like Yo Yo use like this, you know, little like, um, like Mime Cybolt deck. Like, I find it kind of interesting to use that idea. I've already tried that idea on the channel already. There's actually a video already on it. Like, trying to make Garg Mime viable is really hard. I think that was the video title name. I forgot. Anyways, <laughs> overall, Car is just hard to activate its ability, and otherwise, without the ability, it's just a 5 cost 5 7, which does nothing, which is. Dry medium sickness once again, so yep. Uh, so the card is F tier. So next card is Pirate's Booty, guys. Pirate Booty, <laughs> Booty Money. <laughs> so this is definitely the worst card in the Brainy class. Um, <laughs> it's a five cost card that draws, like for a card that every zombie, guys. If this <laughs> drew, you know. Just the, the whole condition of, you know, having so many zombies on the board for this to be worth it. You have to have, you know, at least four zombies staying alive on the board for this to be worth it. And, oh my gosh, this is obnoxious noise, but this is such a bad card. <laughs> this is such a bad card. What are you, like, 
like you have to have this like you have to have an amazing board just for this to be even good you have to have a board of you know four minions staying alive for f like using five brains on drawing cards to be even worth it and if this is only next to like two people uh, i mean not two people but uh two minions on the board then you're only drawing two cards significantly worse than that razor <laughs> Worst card in the, fun, uh, in the brainy class by far, honestly. So yeah. Next one, uh, portal technician. So the whole reason why portal technician is not useful. Five cost four for a dry stat has absolutely no, you know, usefulness to it, and the ability of it is just completely random. And usually you just get a one cost card or a two cost card because most cards in the, in the game. So because most, you know, cards in the game cost two or less. <laughs> <laughs> or rather a lot of the cards and honestly the redeeming clause of this is that you can no there's no redeeming clause of portal technician absolutely zero redeeming clause of portal technician i can easily put stick with an f here it's just a five cost word for you know you know dry minion doing nothing and then when you destroy it you make a random minion i don't even know what the heck that random minion is going to be <laughs> like just like so you know rng dependent just better to not run it and usually just make it crap so Easy F tier. Next card is going to be Shield Crusher Viking. So Shield Crusher Viking is, you know, an E tier card. It's kind of useful in the because it's in the Brainy class, which helps it because you can use it with teleport. Uh, the one usage I found with Shield Crusher Viking is using this in Sushi Aggro. Um, so kind of the thing is that you use Cryo Brain to ramp towards teleporting Shield Crusher Viking and then you can use a flame phase to actually, you know, reactivate the Viking a second time. You know, that's the kind of thing I found out from Sushi Aggro. Like, that's a very unique deck and th that runs Viking legitimately and it does work because you're actually able to just teleport this in in an empty lane and it does 7 damage to your opponent's phase. Uh, Bullseye drains your opponent block drains the block meter. However, problem with Viking is that it's lane dependent and Viking really doesn't do anything other when other than when it does go phase and really limits its you know usefulness because it's significantly worse as just a dry you know minion and pe and again dry minions in this game are just not good you know without teleport this card is complete ass <laughs> and it provides basically no value if you don't have teleport because your opponent can just stick anything in front of it so yeah unfortunately it's just an E tier card not really useful. Uh, so next one is Hell a Copter, and Hell a Copter is you know a budget option for play uh, for budget players. Uh, I'd say that this is useful as a budget option because you can just use Helicopter on turn six, and then you can use Gadget Scientist to turn immediately after and do uh, do a damage, which is you know pretty decent actually at winning the game. Uh, so yeah, that's a really useful. The only use for helicopter otherwise um not useful <laughs> uh you just otherwise it's not useful it's a six cost because six five which is not good at countering you know a lot of the other things that are a lot worse for me on the plant side uh like you know mushrooms free nut uh, helicopter doesn't help at all but helicopter gets a little bit, bit of points just because it's a you know budget option and it works with gadget sciences pretty well it's okay the now next card is going to be Kitchen Sink Zombies. So people think Kitchen Sink Zombies is actually a very bad card. Honestly, it's not as bad as people say, but also not being as good as people say it is uh, when you actually run it. Kitchen Sink is kind of legit uh, inside of a, you know, tempo deck. That you're actually able to develop this tempo on a board, and once you have that tempo on the board, you can teleport this in, and this does an insane amount of damage because it has Bullseye Frenzy, Arbert Overshoot, and Anti Hero. I, I I think everyone can read it, and it has an insane amount of unblockable damage because it has Overshoot and Bullseye and Frenzy, and that makes it you know just more useful in general as a card, but the car the whole problem with kitchen sink is that it's way too slow to try to finish your off your opponent on like, by like turn seven when you start using teleports with it um, usually it's not worth it because then you know you really just you know this gets screwed up even by like anything with more than free health so this gets screwed up by a single walnut <laughs> kitchen sinks all like six damage to phase uh gets completely denied by the usage of one singular walnut so yeah, that's another problem with Kitchen Sink is that it's too slow, gets countered by free combos. Anyway, 
next. So Wizard Garg is completely worthless <laughs> as a card as a whole uh, toward the whole thing because you really again dry minion sickness is that you're playing six cost card only stats <laughs> has no other useful abilities that actually affect what the what the game is gonna happen or whatever is gonna happen next so <laughs> another another victim of the dry minion sickness unfortunately had to go into F tier again <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, next, Bad Rising. Bad Rising gets a little bit of points just for being, <laughs> just for being, a bit useful if you're using it with tele imps. You know, like Bad Rising is usually way too slow because <laughs> you have to get the like really like insane nebula curves to even play that Bad Rising in the first place, or you have to use it with tele imps because then you can use it with imps. Then you can make a couple of imps. Like here or there, transform to like these big minions. It's kind of cool, I guess, but it's really not reliable because a blob is almost certainly better than Bad Rising. Uh, with you know, combo pieces together, uh, when you use it with Tell the Imps, and Bad Rising overall is just not reliable because it gets up random cards. Uh, you get some random five drops, six drops, or whatever, and you know, and there's a lot of crap that could come out of this, like Flowgun Imp, like what do you call it, Flamenco, <laughs> Flamenco. That's also pretty bad. What else is pretty bad? What else is pretty bad last? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know, but there's a lot of crap. Oh, fl yeah, I mentioned Flamenco already, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, go. <laughs> Anyways, there's a lot of crap that came up about Rising. And it makes it really inconsistent as a card in general. Alright, so we're on to the last two cards of the uh, Brainy class. The first one is... No, no, no. The second to the last one is Mechasaur, and Mechasaur really struggles as a card that is way too slow. If there's a reliable way to actually, you know, have enough health by turn 7 and play that Mechasaur and not die that turn, I don't know. Like, the whole reason why Mechasaur loses is because it is just way too slow uh, compared to the pressure that we're actually applying on the board that allows, you know, you know, like denies the fact of Mechasaur being played. Um, and Mechasaurus is useful by a very small margin just because it's able to, you know, high roll, you know, pretty, I don't know, like Undying Pharaohs or whatever you want to call it. Anyways, overall, um, <laughs> not a useful card. Like, Mac, I will give him an E tier here, just for a little bit of consolation prize here. <laughs> Put it in E tier, like, right here. Alright, so, now, we're on to the last card, and everyone's been waiting for this moment. It's Trickster! Guys, Trickster is a very good is a very good top end finisher for Trickstash and Froster. And, it happens to be that they, it's actually only really useful with one hero, because the other heroes kind of suck with Trickster, other than maybe Immortesha, because you can use Area 22 with Trickster now. That Trickster does 8 damage in Area 22. That's more of an Area 22 thing being good, uh, rather than Trickster really being good with Immortesha. Uh, Trickster is really not that great with Immort. <laughs> and, dude, guys, come on. This, this is another misconception. Do not use... <laughs> Do not use Trickster in Pagarati. It's a horrible idea. It's completely anti-synergetic because you're using because Trickster benefits off you having stalled the game late and then you're using combo tools, uh, not combo tools, but able to move efficiently things off the board so you have an empty lane for Trickster. Problem is with <laughs> wait, I forgot what I was gonna say. Wait a second. <laughs> wait, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, the problem. With Trickster in Pagarati is that it is health buffing tricks and it doesn't synergize with Trickster because Trickster benefits off you playing a slow game on the long con and Rustbolt really doesn't have really efficient you know these controlling options and Pagarati really you know would really like to have you know the whole deck just dedicated towards the Pagarati combo and maximizing you know how strong that combo is and overall Trickster does not help with that combo at all other than just being a second win condition which the deck does not need because you have Funded Razor to draw basically infinite win conditions as paparazzi and Trickster happens to just be not useful and Trickster just happens to be not useful with Frostbolt um very good with Frozen Tricks as I already explained that uh, so this card can either be in like very very low A tier or high B tier but just because of it's like you know what do you call it how you know versus how it is i think it's sort of b tier um but yeah 
And that's gonna be it for the Brainy tier list. Um, <laughs> longer than usual stream right here. Uh, but yeah, that's my that's the comprehensive Brainy tier list ranking, whatever you want to call it. The trash fell off the bottom. No one cares about the trash right here. <laughs> Take out the trash right here. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's gonna be it for the Brainy tier list. Man, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> Man, <laughs> okay, that, that, okay, that actually took a lot of time to prepare, oh my gosh, <laughs> I should probably not do more tier list videos, they are really, really hard to do, <laughs> to take a long time to set up, and then to take a long time to even order everything in order of what you actually want to like talk about, and then think about which tier everything is in, so much things to think about when you make a tier list. Anyways, yeah, that's gonna be it. <laughs> Why is telephone zombie above paparazzi? Because uh, cell phone zombie is more useful and froster. I already explained it. 